an amazing instrument and has developed into an incredible voice in today's music. So many types of guitars, so many styles of playing, all sorts of gear. How does one make their voice be heard as a guitarist? My name is Jeff Floro and welcome to All About Guitar, where we talk tone, we talk technique, we talk gear. Where we discover how we can become better musicians in a world of constantly changing technologies. Where we take a good look at everything guitar. And sometimes not exactly guitar, but just as important. So we can be more successful as a musician in today's music scene. So sit back and relax, and let's explore all about guitar. Welcome, everybody. It's a great, I'm really honored to have Mark Bonilla back on the show. Mark, it's, it's just really Awesome to have you back here. Oh, it's great to be back. I'm looking forward to it, man. And um, I told him the last time, I because he was talking about this album now that just finally came out, uh, Celluloid Debris, and I'm going to show you a picture of it here, or the album itself, and I said, you got to come back when this thing's done. So he, he had finally called me said, I got it done. We're ready to go. So uh, I got a chance to uh, pull some clips from it tonight, or la this last week, and I just want to say this is a great it's a great, great album, and there's just there's all sorts of different styles, techniques, tone, guitars, all sorts of different things. So, uh, welcome. It's good to have you on the show, Lori. It's great to have you here, Hello. and thank you for putting this together. This is you're on two, I think. Am I on? Uh, you're three. Much. There Hi. you go. I, I know where you are. Hi. I think we're Facebook Live is live now, so it is okay. So as we talk, as I talk to Mark, and you see me playing with the phone i'm just uh, sharing the link so excuse my uh, phone etiquette but uh anyway again welcome and uh, what i want to do is is talk a little bit from conception to mastering about this album because there's some interesting things that you're doing on the album and i think people need to hear th what the the meaning behind the concept behind it because it's more than just a guitar album it's more like a sonic landscape a lot of the it the key to me or the important part of the of the album is the arrangements, or actually, to be honest with you, it's more of an orchestration than it is just a straight arrangement. So, give me a little bit of background about how this con this album came to be from the beginning. Well, it's it had been like twenty. This has been twenty five years since the last album, since uh, mm -hmm. American Matador, and <laughs> at the time, I didn't I didn't really want to do a, a third guitar album i was too interested in in getting into soundtracks and, mm -hmm. and that's up and uh i had the opportunity to work with james newton howard so i learned a lot from him just watching his mastery mm -hmm. of orchestration and uh keeping my my mouth shut my ears open you know and uh and then i also worked with a lot of other other great composers as well john debney and joel mm -hmm. mcneely and marty davich all these guys and so i you know just by uh, proximity effect I started to you know gain a little bit more knowledge into how to do soundtrack stuff so then mm -hmm. I, I ended up for the next several years a couple of decades just doing soundtrack stuff <coughs> uh, and uh, it uh, it was great because it, it it forced me into a lot of different areas normally you know mm -hmm. uh, styles so it would be what some stuff would be orchestral some stuff would be a brass band some stuff would be you know, uh, Indian music. It all it all depended on what the what the, you know what bill I had to foot. So uh, because of that, I got into a lot of different moods and got to play with a lot of different uh, players. And uh, so when it came time to finally do another el instrumental album, I kind of wanted to reflect all of those places I had been for the past twenty five years. Uh, so. In, in putting this stuff together, so I had maybe two or three ideas that I had began, begun back in the Matador days mm -hmm. uh, that I just kind of left on the shelf. I knew they were, I liked the melodies of the stuff, and but I didn't really pursue them because I wasn't wholeheartedly into it at that point. I mm -hmm. other areas. But now uh, it was great because I went back to revisit them. I pulled them out and dust, dusted them off and actually gave them a new coat of paint and then developed them from that point on into, you know, 
my moderate sensibilities, whatever those happened to be at the time. So uh, in doing this album, I didn't also wasn't, I, I get bored with my own solos. Uh, if it goes on too long, it's kind of like a story that that you know, like you know, if you saw a particular film, well, it's a two and a half hour film, could have been cut to an hour and a half, and it would have been much better film. Mm-hmm. So that's how I feel like about a lot of solos. I think they could be cut to an hour and a half, and and make a better <laughs> make a better solo. Um, you get to the point. It's it's all about storytelling, right. and and this is something that I've always kind of harped on. Is is all art is storytelling. And music is, is especially using your notes, your words, you know, you're using chords as your paragraphs, all of these things. But you still have to tell a story and you have to pace it. You have to have an editor. You know, hopefully it's you. But mm-hmm. if not, it could be somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, so in getting the idea across, a lot of times it's not soloing. That, that tends to be a basis for your ego a lot of the times. Uh, it, it tends to take over. Whereas I always believe that, that as a musician... You're a servant of the music, and you need to give yourself up to whatever the music requires in order for the story to make sense. Mm-hmm. And that means don't stay on too long, you know, or whatever it happens to be. You need to still uh, develop it with a sensibility of you're telling a story and you're not trying to be verbose and you're not trying to go on too long. So with with this album, uh, it's it's mainly, I mean, there's guitars all over it. Mm-hmm. Uh, tons of guitars, uh, and they may only be in for a few seconds, but they're on their own track. And and I I treated it a lot like if you had an orchestra, you had like a hundred and five or hundred six piece orchestra. You know, you have the oboes that are laying out for the first few measures. Then they come in for a minute, and they have a texture with maybe the the, the you know the clarinets. They come back out. You have different textures all the way through the orchestra. So what I've done on the album here is vary my tones to the degree that it's basically like a guitar orchestra, even though it's not, you don't perceive it that way, orchestrally, I've, I've right. tried to make it that way so that the colors, there's constant colors, sometimes it goes black and white, whatever, to try and, and put across the mood or you know, the message you know, from tune to tune. And again, what this is, is, is it's, it's basically the, the, my last 25 years as a person on the planet. You know, what I've learned, what I've come across, uh, things that have happened to me uh, personally, in personal life, uh, professional life, uh, and also with the callbacks from my early childhood with the, with the uh, segs that are in between. Those are all, those are collages of things that yeah. we can talk about. But those all have meaning. There's nothing on here that's just like, yeah, I'm just going to throw this in. There, there's right. all a meaning behind no all No filler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's none. It's, and so that's kind of was the concept. That was why the album is called Celluloid Debris. It was debris <laughs> from my brain just bits and pieces of my life, you know, as a soundtrack. And celluloid is like film. You know? uh, it's interesting because the um, for doing an instrumental album, there's only one um, song here where there's vocals mm-hmm. on the album. And what you're saying, you know, it's not about soloing and stuff. It seems like it's difficult. Well, it didn't seem difficult in terms of what you executed, but to keep that interest and freshness because... The songs are, on the whole, like five minutes or so. There's a couple, I think, a little longer. But the thing is, is that, like you said, each verse or each chorus or whatever, it's it's different each time you're hearing. Now, I'm playing clips tonight. When I show you some of the clips, the, uh, the songs are much more developed. So I'm just pulling snapshots. But what he's talking about is there's a lot more development. The way the, the opening, the first verse into the second verse... The colors change in the you know what you hear uh, arrangement wise. That's what we were talking about before the show started. Actually, about developing composition versus just playing well, a song. And you're, you're actually inter- it's like like a song, like a script. You're introducing characters. Yeah. And you have a character throughout a story, right? That comes in. You know, then it goes out. Then another character comes in. Then their relationship later on develops right. into something. And at right. some point, they all tie together at the end. So. Right. What you're doing here is basically telling a story with a script and the characters are your motifs. You know? Right. So that's kind of where this Now, was slides. this, was this because there's so many little things. And, and <laughs> now, the Facebook Live, just so you know. It goes back to Peter and the Wolf, right? <laughs> the, 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 the Facebook Live is, is yeah. mono. It's just the way Facebook Live is. But if you can listen to the audio clip that'll be on LA Talk Radio, you'll hear this in stereo. Because there's a lot of stuff going on in the, in your two, between your two ears. There's a lot of these little guitar things happening, and we'll we'll point out some of them as we play some of the clips. So take a listen for that because that's a lot of the secret. Now, I, what I wanted to ask you though, was this a real bugger to mix? 
Oh, yes. Um, the only way that this album ever saw the light of day was because of Mr. Ryan Green. Thank you, uh, Ryan. Yes. We he, love Ryan Green. Absolute prince <laughs> and fearless. Any any other mixing engineer would have been cowering naked in a corner in a fetal position, <laughs> looking at the tracks. You want me to do what? Mix this? You know. <laughs> so he was amazing, he, and he gave up so much of his time and energy. Uh, and this this is a guy that's not just sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. Exactly. He's, he's, he's constantly busy. busy, and he overworks himself, uh, and it just but but never loses the passion. And so we did a lot of the drum track, majority of the drum tracks we did at his place. And there's mm -hmm. nobody that does drum tracks better than him. And He's miking, just yeah. Amazing crazy, yeah. miking techniques. And then, again, mixing this was a Herculean feat. You know, as far as getting all of these parts to, to work the way I had them in my head. You know, it's one thing to have them in your head. It's another thing. And it's really what art is all about. Getting them from your head into a three-dimensional area where you can actually pass that on to someone else that's yeah. the whole art of any anything like that well you were telling me before the show that you maxed out the most all the channels yeah yeah i actually hold the <laughs> record I, I have to contact guinness um i <laughs> i actually maxed out uh, uh ryan's 165 tracks of pro tools oh, and we still had to submix uh, a part of it so he goes, you know that you've you've done the impossible. You've actually maxed out my Pro Tools system, you know. And like, yeah, we had to do a submix of the of the of the string quartet at the end of Long Awakened because there were so many parts, but they're not all playing at the same time. But right, we right. had we needed all to have their own sonic area. So you basically gave each guy his own track. You didn't like put several instruments on one track. No, 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 yeah. we didn't. No, everything had its. That's own. old school, by yeah, the way. Well, uh, it wasn't that we didn't do some of that. We did, but but in a logical fashion but most of it was because it needed its own sonic identification so mm -hmm. that the stuff doesn't sound cluttered it sounds very clear and, and right. transparent yet rich you know and so again i could not have done this without ryan he was just a saint well know? let me play i'm going to play alpha male the first track on here and this is a good indicator of uh how many of a lot of guitar parts you're going to hear a lot of different things going on here and uh, kind of give you a feel of the complexity of the mix i mean there's a, just all of these songs there's a lot of stuff happening here so here's alpha male take a listen Now, in that about two minutes, that's about a two minute clip, and that's that's just a little snapshot of the whole <laughs> overall song. There's about twenty guitars that just flew by there. And, about... and that acoustic spot was so yeah, beautiful. Yeah, 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 I was like, yeah. whoa. Try to give equal time to electricity <laughs> yeah. and wood. <laughs> now, what were you using on that? <laughs> that's a, that, a, that's... Got an hour. There's the show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, I would have to think. Well, obviously, my Martin is on the uh, mm -hmm. the acoustic part. I also had a Giffen. Uh, uh, 12 string uh, I had a, a double neck made 
uh, and that that uh, that was on the other arpeggiation part. I have a six string banjo in there at mm-hmm. one point. Uh, main guitar for that is my maybe my Marvel guitar over here, mm-hmm. the Yamaha Pacifica. Uh, also, I believe there was uh, Strat in there uh, at, at one of the one of the sections. So it all just it all just depended on what you know when I would lay something down. He goes, "What does it need now? Where where in the sonic spectrum is there somewhere that that you know a, a part that is meaningful for the song? I didn't just put parts in just to have them in there. There was it had to be a meaning for it." So I would write them, but it was like, hey, what's the best guitar to, to get this done? In other words, mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. what's the character that I'm trying to develop at this point and 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 push the story forward? So you know, again, you have to remember that that when I do this stuff, like any any writer or any creator, this stuff doesn't come from you; it comes through you. So you're not conscious of a lot of the, the decisions that you make. You basically go, okay, you're just grabbing stuff because it's almost like, like someone's willing you to grab a particular instrument. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times I don't, have, I don't have a proper recall of all the things that I did because it's, too, it's happening too fast. Right. Because a lot of times I'm afraid I'm going to lose the idea or I'm going to lose the concept if I don't act on it. You know, because this stuff comes through you. It's like rain. Sure. You know? And if you it's don't, it's like dreams. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't grab onto it, someone else will get the ring. Yeah. Well, it's you cool know? because It'll you're just disappear. You're, you're doing a like a you'll do the main melody and then you answer it, but you'll answer it like three guys. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. All around and they'll da, 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 yeah. and then they're gone. Well, it's like you know we like 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 the Beach Boys doing their you know right. and whatever doo wop any of that stuff. It was all kind of having conversations. You know, and, and any given conversation you have, if you have six people in the room. Sometimes all three, all six are talking at the same time. Sometimes one person, sometimes one person and two people respond. Mm-hmm. It's all a different combination of who's who's talking in order to have a conversation. So, mm-hmm. so it all depends. You know what what's needed for a comment. Am I asking a question? Is it getting an answer? Are we doing a soliloquy? What is it? You mm-hmm. know? And so, and that's just kind of you go you navigate by feel. You don't now, do this in your brain. When you recorded this album, did you mic stuff or did you do a lot of it in the box? I did both. Uh, a lot of this album, believe it or not, is on my little Line 6 pod. Really? Uh, the little kidney pod. You know, the first kind the of... The one that you brought last time. Yes. I, I did a lot of tones with that, you know, because uh, I've really been able to get that thing to sound good. Um, I'm putting it through Neves, you know, mm. Neve, Neve preamps. But then I used my red plate on a lot of stuff, and I unfortunately I got my red plate right at the end of the, the album. So I ended up taking stuff off to put. I re-recorded stuff because <laughs> the thing sounded so good. I did, I wanted to get it on the album, you know. Uh, so I did a lot there. Um, also, my divided by thirteen. I, I used some of that. Uh, my Fender Twin. You know, it mm-hmm. was all basically like, what does this need? And a lot of times it's the guitar, sometimes the combination of the guitar and the amp. Mm-hmm. And I didn't care what it was if it sounded right. right. It didn't matter what it was. Well, you mentioned with Ryan that you recorded all the drums at his place, yes. which was a room. Yeah. So I presume you took this to a room. Yeah. Or the Well, or I the have other... a room at my house. I did all the guitars at my place. So you can pull the mics back oh, and, yeah, yeah, and get a yeah, good sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and again, you know, he obviously helped with the tones and separation of getting things to work. Mm-hmm. In those areas, some some of them needed a little bit more work than others. Some of them were effortless, you know. So you know, but again, he did a masterful job. That one sounded like a racetrack to me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way hey, to open it It's a really, it's a really <laughs> rocker and it moves. Yeah, I but can. now I'm going to play something that's a little different. That kind of shows more of the colors in the uh, in what he's doing in the. This one's called Westwood. Now, do you okay. want to say anything to set this one up? Well, this was uh, this was one of the older ones that I had actually started back after Matador. Mm-hmm. But never finished it. Uh, but this was a tribute to Clint Eastwood and Sergio Leone. It ah. was, a, you know, it's like a spaghetti. It's my, my if if Eastwood would have done the good, the bad, the ugly, and the douchebag, whatever it happened to be, this would have been the this next. Been this would have been the soundtrack to that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a this is a really cool. Well, I'm going to just play it, then we'll start talking about yeah, guitars because okay. some interesting things that he's doing in this. So here's Westwood.
Now that's a good example of that type of layering and orchestration. Um, I love that classical guitar. So yeah, gorgeous. It's a are Yamaha. You, are you playing yes, fingers or, yeah. or pick? Oh, no, I don't play with pick. Only with fingers. Because you can't get God, that, that tone. fleshy, you can't get the fleshy dig on it. But it's, it's got a good tone. It sustains yeah. really well. Yeah, and that's going. That's actually going direct. That's not being mic. That thing sounds so good. It's an APX9 Yamaha. And it sounds so good just plugged in, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, with the compressor and that's it. Just sounds amazing. They're great. That's yeah. a great sounding guitar. Now, it sounded like a 12 string, but it's it was like two octaves up. Is that electronic? No, that was two different guitars. You talking about on the da 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 da? Yeah, no, that was a uh, it was a um, tech tone on the bottom, Yamaha tech tone, and on the top it was a carbon seven string that I used for the top because it had just had the right combination of tones so that it sounded like one guitar. Yeah, but it's not because it, it has a 12 stringy feel, but yeah. it's totally yeah, different. no, That's... but it has the twang. It just happened to have the twang that I was looking for because it really you need to twang that stuff like doing yeah. you know, you need it. You need to twang it, you know, and there was some other things in there. I, I had a buddy of mine, Ernie Ventry, actually uh, uh, lent me his spurs. He actually had a pair of spurs so at the beginning of that jing, jing, jing. It was jiggling spurs. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like Clint, you know, you know yeah, riding, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so you need the clangy, clang, you know, the horse. The Western tempo. feel. Yeah, yeah so, I, sure. so that set the tone. Yeah, that you know. came across what, what was very cool, well. too, is when you were playing the classical guitar part, when you answered, there was like a little, there was two guitars on each side, yeah. electric, mm -hmm. and then their echo. So, but it yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an ES3. I think it was an ES335 that I used that. ES335? ES3 I'm sorry, 335. 345. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so but, that was, yeah. And <laughs> I have to put kudos out to Ryan because that's hard. There's a lot going on in yes. there, but the echo's clean. It doesn't yeah. get in the way. No, he was so good about that stuff. I remember on this... <laughs> on this actual tune and we was mixing it for and he goes you know there's so many parts here he says it's kind of overwhelming I remember <laughs> saying that <laughs> I'm like yeah I know uh, it's not my fault I I only do what I'm told you know <laughs> yeah so but but he he really got it to work you know because it was just you know he's used to not having th that dense of of something to have to that's maneuver. not easy to keep no, on it so you can that's hear what I'm everything. Saying. It was just without without him, it would have not. This would not have been the album that it is. The only other guy I know that can do that well is Alan Parsons. And yeah, I think he'd he was busy. Tough, he was. Yeah, he'd have a tough time <laughs> with that. Yeah. yeah. Now, is Alan. what was the bass? You were playing bass. Right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. And yeah. what's that? that how was, did you get that sound? That, that's a cool. Yeah. Sound. That was a, again. That was a Yamaha uh, Attitude bass, a, a five string Attitude bass, and I have that going through an Ampeg uh, preamp into a neve and uh, yeah, into the board or into the into the that was it the yeah. growl in it is just yeah. pushing the preamp that, a little? yeah yeah it's Getting, got a yeah, weird it, sound to it yeah it's kind of cool it's got a, yeah well you want a little bit of aggressive you know sound so that hey if you isolated just that track you'd hear it distorting on the top mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so yeah um let's take a listen of this song which is i it's i grew up with this song and uh I think it's kind of cool what you did with this four and twenty. Okay. Uh, so talk a little bit. Of, set it. Set this up a little bit. I well, I was always a you know big Crosby, Stills, Nash, and <laughs> Young fan, especially Steve Stills. My one of my favorite songs of all time was Black Queen. Oh, Just yeah. amazing <laughs> work. It's actually I kind of stole his vibe for Justified. That I detuned my my Martin down to C open C like that. And I did a lot of that kind of cool stuff that he did on that. Um, but. 4 and 20 was on the Deja Vu album, and it's just a singular folk song, you know. Yeah. And I wanted to, it, it just occurred to me, it wasn't anything I was thinking about. Like, what should I redo? I was listening to it in the car one day, and I, and, and I heard it, I heard like a, hearing, you know, the, <clears throat> the actual theme, thinking, this would sound cool with a John Bomb, like a levy. You know, mm -hmm. 4 and 20, it, it, it lent itself to a whole different feel. So I thought, well, let me let me run this up the flagpole, see what happens, <laughs> and uh, and so I, I I I think I even lifted the bottom beat just as a loop, you know, just the opening part of just to try it out, step four, just to see, you know, yeah. and then put you know, I put a bass thing to it, just right. like a, like a filter, nice shot, man, you know, and, hey, nice shot, man, like mm -hmm. you know, like a like an eighth note, and then started putting this, and I'm like, this this has a good feel to it, it has a really good feel, and so from that point. I had to make it a little bit long, so that I mean a little bit longer than the original song, which is only like two and a half minutes long. So I put a, a middle part that was just like I was putting down an idea 
with two different guitar parts, just listening to what I put down before. So that whole middle section is completely improv. I, I did. I thought this is working. I'm not going to redo it. And that was the pod. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I said, okay, I'm going to let that lay as it is, you know, and and not disturb it, not overthink it. Uh, so that's yeah. no, it's 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 surprising in the terms of what you what I originally remember of the song when I read later when I was listening to it, I was trying to hear the theme and yeah. I caught it, but I mean it was like. Wow, this well, is totally different. Also, I tried to really emulate his little things that he does in there. Little, dun, 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 dun. you know, he does a couple of those things that are trademarked for me when I heard that song. I've heard it for so many, you know, years. Do me a favor, t- show us what you're talking about. Well, let's see. Um, it would be. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, the... He would he would go down. I'm trying to think of the part in the song. I could point it out when it does it. Um, uh, I embrace the many colors. Of the he also would go flat on a note. He would drop a note every so often. Um, is she gone? Yeah, I, I would have to. I can hear it in my head when I can. All right, I let can, me play it and then it out keep you. your guitar with you, right. and then we can talk a little more. Yeah, because I, I think this out. is kind of interesting to see what what you're talking about. Yeah. Here. Okay, here's four and twenty. All right. Brilliant. A little different than the original. <laughs> well, like on the on the first verse where he says, "Is she gone?" Everything goes away. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just one of the things where the lyrics I wanted to, to communicate that, so everything just dies out for a split second. I wanted it completely zero black digital right before ca- where you actually came in at. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there were certain areas where I tried to make sure that since I was singing the lyrics with the guitar, to make sure that those the meaning of those lyrics came across right, m- right. musically. Mm. So there were a, f- a few places that would be like verse one and two where I would do that or I would cop exactly his little vocal turn. Yeah, this is at do. the... Uh, I, I yeah, this was the, from the, the actually improv part yeah. all the way out. But I think the stuff that I was referring to is basically the, the beginning of that where I, I tried to really communicate the meaning of the lyrics, mm-hmm. you know, about this guy who had, you know, this, this is really, I think, about his father, uh, I believe, uh, his hard life that he had. You mm-hmm. know, and and uh, so it's. Uh, I tried to kind of, again, musically, put that put that forth. Yeah. Now it's interesting. You were saying about Black Queen because when I had Snuffy on, that was one of his favorites well, too. As well, it should be. And it was interesting because he had those old Martin pre-war Martins, and yeah. and Stills was a guy I always said he could distort a Martin. Yes. And it sounded great. Well, he, he just dig in. Dig. It. That's the thing is his aggression. And that's what thing that one of the things on this that I was trying to transport that Black Queen energy into mm-hmm. this track. Bam! You know, he hit that thing like Bruce Lee would kick somebody in the side. You know, and you'd let that string the string would go sharp. It would hit so hard. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then ring back down into pitch. Yeah. You know, and his that aggressive style that he had of, of, of wangling that string. 
Yeah, you have just, to check out that Black Queen on his first solo album. First solo album, it's yeah. unbelievable. It the tone unbelievable. he gets yeah. is just to die. It for. is unbelievable. And then he's and then him scatting with himself too. Yeah, in there. it's just it's an, a piece of it's just a, one of my favorite guitar tracks of all time. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. It's great. That's a great song. Yeah. Now there's another one that you did. Um, that was an, uh, an another uh, cover of another song from Godly and Krem, mm-hmm. Sailor. I want to play that because that's an interesting one too. Um, talk. Let's talk a little bit about. Well, that. I'm a huge 10 CC fan, and even bigger Godly and Cream fan. Mm-hmm. I love their their boldness and their inventiveness and and fearlessness when it came to their solo albums. And this album was off of um, a triple album set that that uh, highlighted the Gizmotron, and it was a tune called Sailor, and it was done very much like the sultry summertime, you know, like Porgy and Bess, and it was just Kevin Godley and that gorgeous, you know, falsetto tenor voice that he has. And it's just basically one guitar and one Gizmatron part, which I recreated with the Ebo on this. And again, I thought it was so, it's such a sexy song and sultry. So I kind of wanted to pay tribute to Ronnie Montrose and the way that he did Town Without Pity, mm-hmm. which made it so sexy and, and just swa- it swaggered. So I decided, okay, this is a good, this would be a good track to maybe pay tribute to two people you know uh, godly and cream as far as composers and ronnie mantras as far as you know an approach and so this has a real a, a very similar beat to town without pity and thought that this the melody could fit really well over this so at the beginning of this it's um i have it uh, i have my guitar going through a leslie so you can hear it, it's it's it spins around and it's kind of like the wish you were here mm-hmm. kind of vibe at the beginning to put you into a trance, you know. And that first that first guitar is just direct, no no amp. And then when it kicks in, then I go to a strat. Oh, okay. And, you know, so you hear that, you know. And I'm really digging in with that. And there's you know I have a uh, some some fast Leslie going on in a vib- vibraphone is at the same time in that opening section. And then I then I completely transfer it. Over to a jazz, you know, uh, yeah, bah, that's bah, 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 bah. where the clip starts is the swing, right? And that's uh, with my buddy Jim Gammon, who was uh, one of my lifelong uh, friends, who's on trumpet, who was responsible mm-hmm. for a lot of my musical upbringing, and uh, I had him come down and play trumpet on that, and so uh, it's great, you know. And it, it turned, it turned, and again, this was a part that I was gonna. I, I have, I have this bad habit of asking somebody to be on the album. And then when I give them like a, a sample of what I kind of where I want to play, I end up keeping it and going, "Sorry, I don't, I don't need you." On here. I screwed Lyle Workman over. I screwed Greg Douglas over. I, I feel bad about it, but they totally understand. But it's like you know, and this was another one where Jim was supposed to play a trumpet solo, but I, so I, I rattled off like here, like this kind of a feel. And I listened to it, I go, "Damn, this sounds good over the top of this." I don't think I, I, I don't need a, a trumpet, but he played all in and around it and a lot of stuff at the end and all of that. You know, but that is him doubling with me on the guitar. Is it going to yeah. different texture? You it's know? interesting hearing the trumpet with the yeah, guitar. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. So what, what part of we're taking is uh, where he starts the swing lead. Yeah, and that's okay. the strat. Yeah, uh, no, that's a telly actually telly. on the on the. Um, or see, uh, you're talking about the solo section. Yeah, the, where you start, it's like a fast swing, and then yeah. it, then I'm going to go in a little bit into the yeah the, the slower. Shuffle. Yeah, that was a telly, and at the end, then that's the mar that's the marble again. Okay. At the end when it goes back. Okay, let's go ahead and play this and take a listen. You can see what he's talking about here. Here's Sailor.
she showed up at my doorstep. You know, <laughs> it's like oh, the, yeah, the muted. Her pure fume <laughs> permeated the office. Yeah, you know, it was real. The per- film the lot. <laughs> the muted trumpet just sets yeah, the whole atmosphere. I know. Amazing. Yeah, it that's just amazing. Vibes, it vibes and he's it. only doing a little. It's just enough. No, and it's he just, just he vibes that stuff. He channels Miles. This guy. I mm-hmm. mean, it's it's yeah. I've had him on a lot of uh, my soundtrack stuff. We've worked all the way through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's he's an incredible guy. It's a great feel. I mean, I love that. That swing thing. And that's Joe Travers, by the way, on drums, just tearing it up back there, Mm -hmm. you know, know, doing that swing. He can play anything you give him. He's just like, what do you need? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's that's great. And then when you, so that's the Marvel guitar when you go back to the. When we go back to it, yeah, yeah. yeah. The the whole middle section. Again, I just threw it down. That's a a one-take thing. I just said something like this. And uh, yeah, that wasn't that was just one take going through it. And we go, wow. wow, that sounds pretty damn good. Yeah, so no, it's I a great, it. it's a great, it's a great shuffle. It really works. I'm curious to see if what they was both Godly and Krem and Stills if they respond I, to. I it. would love to, to know <clears throat> what their opinion is, even if they think it sucks. That's opinion, you know. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go into because um, I want to give you enough time to play mm-hmm. our arc light, which we'll take out. But I want to talk a little bit about the last two songs because mm-hmm. these more than others, what I was impressed with most, and I'm not playing, you'll hear that what I'm showing is not as much the lead section, but the amb- you do these like ambient guitar things that you're doing in there, which is to me more orchestrational yeah. in that sense. So the first one I'm going to talk about is, uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, The Long Awakening. Can mm-hmm. you, you want to kind of set that up? Well, I, for years I had been I felt guilty because I hadn't written a song for my son, Nate. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to, and all everybody I know has written a song for their, their child, you know. But it, it, it finally kind of occurred to me that, that this one, I wanted to do something about parenthood, where, where the adventure of starting when he was in the womb, basically, all the way to the point where he says goodbye. Mm-hmm. And that's what the song is. It's, it's the long awakening is his awakening as an adult and our awakening as parents. Uh, so it starts in the womb. The beginning of it, and it's there's three notes, boom, 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 which which is our family, Joey, myself, and Nathaniel, and so that that tr- that tri note motif goes all the way through, okay. uh, in different incarnations. You'll hear it going all the way through. Mm-hmm. All the, it starts the song and it ends the song, mm-hmm. and it starts it starts in the womb, which is all the the kind of uh, floaty ambient stuff. You know this the, this kind of you know serene kind of vibe then at one point you hit this big crash and that's his birth and then all of a sudden you start to hear the, the tempo pick up and when it kicks in that's basically our life together is now a family oh. and it goes through that it goes through a darker area which is his adolescence of you know the, the 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 areas where you're not quite sure who you are and all of that and then the acoustic section is the maternal is my wife's influence you know over mm-hmm. you know with him and then it comes to a point where it stops and there's just solo piano, and this is him moving out. And I remember how it was when I moved out. My mother, I remember the look on her face. You know, she was <laughs> letting me go, but I could see the sadness, you know. And it was like a real bittersweet moment, you know, when I was getting my own place and moving on. And I know what that empty nest, you know, was like now. And so, and then the whole end part is, is you know, his it, it, es- it escalates gently all the way up. And gets more complex because that's his life as he as he gets to be an adult. The more things come in, but there's a soul that goes over the top of it, which is in my was my feeling of of a parent's guiding light over I the top knew of that. Say. <laughs> so it's it's kind of like here's you know just to keep in mind what mom said, what dad said, you know, and then at the end it stops abruptly because it's like my God, it's we're done. You know, we're done. It's an empty nest, and so the whole quartet at the end is is our memories of all those times. Yeah. So now I think that if I remember correctly, this the part I'm playing right now is at the front. But what I, what was interesting, and again credit to Ryan, mm-hmm. is you're doing a lot of stuff with a lot of echoes. Yeah. And you can hear it all. Yeah. It's all there, and mm-hmm. it doesn't get muddy at all. And there's a lot of stuff going on back yes, there. Yes, there is. But headphones, it, headphones. Yes. yes. This one, if you, when you buy the album, this one you really got to sit down and listen yeah. to yeah, in depth of because it's just um, amazing what he's what he's doing on this. So this is called The Long Awakening and we're, it's right here. Let's take a listen.
what you're doing in the beginning is just a, I love all that Stunning. ear candy. That's what yeah. I call that. Well, ear I candy. started with Nate's heartbeat. Yeah, yeah I if hear you the, the pow, pow, yeah. that was actually his actual heartbeat when. Yeah. Wow. When, yeah, I, I recorded it when oh. we were at the doctor. Nice. Wow. And so that's what sets the tempo. And then you hear him in there when he after he's born. You hear yeah, that birth, or you can hear him in the background. I had him. I you know I always record him, and he's in the back. Like he was about maybe two, I think. You know, oh, it was wow. like, it's like your child's voice is like music. So yeah. that's it's another instrument. And so I put him in the back there, you know. That's interesting. How did he react to it? Oh, he just he he it was funny. I didn't play it for him until it was absolutely finished, you know, and I played it for him. <laughs> and he sat there and he listened listened to because he's eighteen now. You know, he sat there and listened to it. And then and, and he goes, I, his, he, he was sarcastic, which was great. Exactly what I would expect. He says, couldn't you do anything that was worthwhile? You know, I mean, he says something like that. <laughs> looked at me like, you know, I'm laughing. And he starts laughing, you know. He, no, he, <coughs> it, it, I think it meant a lot to him, you know. But yeah. it, it meant more to me because it was, it, again, it was dad's sentiment, you know. Well, so. Of course. Now, it's some of the guitars, true. you're getting a really, you're getting really interesting sounds. Like yeah. the, the slide guitar is kind of a. It's it's not a standard like it, no it's a pedal steel. Oh, it is a pedal yeah, steel. Yeah, it's a pedal steel. I had I had a Sierra made left-handed for me. Oh, and so very I cool. It's a pedal steel, which I have no. I don't know how to play a pedal steel at all, which is perfect. I think you do it well. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, you know, how does this thing work? Well, that sounds pretty good. I have no idea how to work the pedals yet. I got to get stunk, skunk to help me. Help me <laughs> was, with that. was there a, a twelve string in there? Yeah. There was a twelve string, yeah. It was a it was a Yamaha, and then uh, the Tinkley Echo guitars. Um, that was uh, my Green Pacifica that I have that mm-hmm. I played with Emerson with. Um, yeah, there were there again. There were so many different guitars going on. It's amazing, and all the echoes. It's it's really cool yeah. What it's you're doing. It, it, it was kind of you know. I I mean I was always such a huge fan of, of Pink Floyd and Gilmore, you know, and and they were so good at laying down. Uh, environments oh, like yeah that, ambiance know. yeah you know Total. that really give you a feeling i mean each section on. of that song you could just take it and yeah. go okay like just give me a song of that yeah you know? <laughs> <laughs> now i'm gonna go ahead real quick because we're almost out of time and yeah. i want to let you play that one okay. song to take us out arc light uh this is our winter love and again there's some really what i want to mention it's a nice very mellow song mm-hmm. but like you're you're using the baritone guitar yes yes so yeah. i want everybody to listen because this is very cool and then we can talk real quickly after the we play it. But this is um, Our Winter Love. Now that song really demonstrates that whole orchestrational attitude in terms of when things come in and out mm-hmm. and how it builds. It starts, it builds up with this very simple thing going on, and then these little guys come in and out and all that stuff. It's I love it, and that 
that baritone. It's yeah, killer. It's, it's well, that was Wichita lineman. <laughs> it was such a yeah, it was total Glenn Campbell, Wichita lineman. But I mean, it's such a wonderful, soothing. It's like comfort food. Yeah, it's rich. You know, it's and rich. it's just like oh, you don't hear it enough anymore. Yeah, yes. you know, beautiful. And you have to. I didn't. I just pulled the front of the clip, but I think this is the one where you have the string section at the end, right? Uh, no, that's uh, that's the the other one. Way the there. other one. Oh, okay. This does have strings in it, but no, it's this beautiful. Is. I mean, and that's just a tidbit of it. it there's much more developed yeah. into the song. Yeah. Anyway, we're out of time. Um, real quick, uh, markboniamusic.com is the website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's going on? What's happening with you? Well, uh, I'm going to be doing this actually at the beginning of the year at Bogies, thanks to Miss Reamer over here. Yeah. Uh, we'll be on the 26th. Uh, it's Sunday, and I've got... Uh, of January. Yeah, of January. Uh, we're going to be playing this stuff live, along with some stuff from Doubly Ticket and American okay. Matador, maybe even some Keith Emerson stuff. We'll mm -hmm. see. With an amazing band. Yeah, yeah. i got Thomas Lang on drums. Uh, Steve Picard is going to come in and play mm -hmm. some piano. Jonathan Sindelman, Mike Wallace, uh, uh, Travis Davis from Keith's band. So, And there may be some others. We'll see. But uh, So that's happening, and then I'm playing with uh, Edgar Winter, as well, that's coming up, and also with Harry Shear, we're doing the Derek Smalls uh, <laughs> tour. Yeah, I got to go to that the, the, again. The, uh, yeah. So funny. Yeah, he's so funny. <laughs> that's a, he's I mean, just funny. just playing that stuff is just yeah. it has to be a blast. Jeff, you should come. It's really great. Yeah, a lot of well, I want to next month. What day? What day? That's on Sunday on the twenty sixth. I got to figure out when Nam is happening. It depends on. Yeah, NAMM. I think it's. I think it's the weekend after Nam. Yeah. If it's a weekend after now, I'm yeah, gonna, I, I want to book shows I, on them. Yeah, weekend. yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's a crazy. That'd be silly. Yeah, <laughs> but that I want to see. I want to see how you do this live. Yeah, right? well, I've been I've been working on it. I've yeah. been yeah. condensing all easy. these parts to the essential parts. <laughs> but it's fun. It's it's good. It, you know, but there, this isn't easy stuff to perform. It's it's a little oh yeah, a little complex. So, but uh, but great. I I I'm glad this, this is a great album. I uh, I can't rec I can't say enough about it. I recommend everybody get this. It's really cool. There's so much stuff. We just scratch the surface and what's going on in the album. But there's a lot of things happening. So I want to thank you again. Well, thank you. Um, I'm going to take us out with the clip arc like when I'll have you play. Okay. And you want to kind of set it up real quick? Well, this was a, a tune uh, that I had written with Gary Hull, who was a, a great friend of mine that I roomed with mm -hmm. back in the day. And he had actually written some of this stuff. And I found it on a tape cassette. And so I found him, tracked him down, and says, hey, can I, can I – do this on the album and can i i'm going to write you know stuff around it and he says yeah absolutely so this is kind of was a, a group uh, a co-write for this okay so and uh, again thank you Lori, for putting this together anything you need to announce while you're uh i would just well we already announced mark's show but also at bogey's on october 17th we have the delgado brothers ah yes they've yes. been on the show they're great, yes. great players we love them and uh Okay. Uh, thanks again so much. It's always good to see Laura. I don't get to see her enough. I know. And it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Okay. So everybody have a great week. Uh, check this out. This album's available everywhere. You've got to get this thing. It's great. And this is Arc Light. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>